What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're jumping into something awesome. The full documentary, Gander's Ripple Effect, How Small Towns Kindness Open on Broadway. We know that it's from the Come From Away story. Definitely a heart kind of touching story. Uh, humanity at its finest is what I would say. Let's jump into it. Let's check it out together. We're going to watch the first part today. We will watch the second part tomorrow. Let's see what we got. If you enjoy it, get over show CBC, NL, Newfoundland, and Labrador some love. We already subbed up. We've already smashed the like button. It's coming at us from Chris. I definitely appreciate this journey. Let's go. Let's see what we got. On a clear blue September morning, steel straight lines broke and crumbled, changing the world. Apparently, a small passenger plane has crashed into one of the World Trade Towers. As we turned and banked over Long Island, I was looking out the window and that's when the second plane hit. Um, so there was a puff of smoke on the horizon. I was in high school. I remember that day very vividly. Minutes after the attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, U.S. airspace shut down. Hundreds of planes in the air above the Atlantic Ocean were ordered to backtrack to Europe or land at Canadian airports. 38 jets turned towards what used to be the world's largest runway. Those jets held 7,000 passengers. Gander's population was about to double. With a proud military tradition and a history of stepping up, Gander was more ready than most towns would be. Our plane was scheduled to land at JFK at 9 o'clock in the morning. That's where we were diverted from. So as we were approaching JFK over Long Island, the first plane hit the World Trade Center towers and between the first and second planes is when our captain was given the, the information to turn and head north to Gander. So as we approached Gander, I remember looking out the window and seeing uh, seven other airplanes already parked on the runway. And we, like an evil Knievel daredevil rider, we skimmed over the top of those airplanes and landed on the other side of them. Welcome to unexpected uh visit to Canada, we are in Gan Gander, just informed of a horrible tragedy in Washington and in New York City, and uh, thank God we're not a part of it. We're safe here, but um, anyway, every single plane over the ocean is being diverted here, I think. So we're not sure where we're going to go or how long we're going to be here. We had received a report through our communication lines that uh, what would appear to be a, maybe a terrorist activity or hijacking has occurred. On the ground for eight hours. You can only imagine what was going through their minds. On the plane for, I don't know, eight, 15 hours? I don't know. don't even know. Anyway, we're getting ready to get off soon. I learned when we got off the airplane, these yellow school buses that were there to sh shuttle us around, the driver told us they were actually on strike. And um, they had come off the strike um, in order to help people. And I'll never forget, clear as day, we got off the plane. It was this beautiful blue sky, completely warm. The first thing that happened was somebody came to me with like a little box of food and a toothbrush. And there was a complete stranger who just walked up to me and said, here. While the bomb squad was examining the planes full of passengers, the people of Gander and surrounding towns got busy. 
setting up cots, gathering bedding, and cooking for thousands. Everybody had to be processed by the Red Cross, and, and this is where they had tables set up with all the food and everything for all the passengers when we got off the plane. And that's what was so amazing to us is, you know, we've been on the airplane all night, we get off, and I was just shocked at the amount of food they had cooked overnight. They mm -hmm. obviously did not sleep one minute. My children were eight and nine, and um, actually it was a very hard day for my husband because it, there was such an unknown for him. All they knew is that I was flying, you know, the, my husband and my kids, um, but they didn't know where I was. And they spent the whole day not knowing where I was because even though they tried to call American, I mean, you weren't going to be able to get through. And uh, American had a huge domestic operation to deal with, not to mention the fact that we had lost two airplanes. I knew where I was. I knew I was okay. I knew I was on the ground in Gander, but my family did mm -hmm. not know. So, so it was much more challenging for them. And in the beginning imagine. of the musical, when Jen picks up the phone and says, I'm fine, Tom, it's still very hard for him. No, I'm fine, Tom. I'm fine. For the 7,000 passengers who were finally out of their planes and on the ground, relief was soon mixed with shock. Incredible. How are you making breakfast for? Uh, approximately 300. Today. So, yes, that's right. So uh, hopefully we'll get them all fed within a reasonable time. How long have you been here helping you? Oh, uh, we came here yesterday morning and we worked till uh, 9, 10 o'clock last night and we came back again 7 o'clock this morning. So, and we're here cooking breakfast now for our people. So we're trying to do the best we can. What the effort of you with Banner put into this? I think it's fantastic. The amount of food we have here is unreal. I mean, people have been supporting from all over, from Lewisport, Botwood, various places around, uh, around the loop and that food is just coming in, it's amazing, the response to, that we're getting. The sun rising, uh, we're in uh, Gander, Newfoundland, and uh, this is our home for last night at the College of the North Atlantic uh, in Gander. For the most part, you only hear about the people that were on the plane. You only hear about that side of the trench. You never really even thought, until I saw this anything from this musical i never thought about anybody that was on one of the diverted planes anybody that had to cancel their travel anybody that ended up in a place that they weren't planning on ending up the fact that so many people came together is i don't know it's a tremendous tremendous thing it shows exactly how awesome humanity can be and they've been wonderful people here uh, to host us and tons of volunteers and just amazing. I think it's absolutely wonderful. People of Ghana have been absolutely marvellous. <laughs> For what they've done here, they deserve a medal. They've been so, so generous. <laughs> I can't thank them enough. It's the same, everybody feels the same down here as well. Everybody off the plane have been so grateful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely great. You are very lovely people. I just thought we could do the same if it, uh, if it ever happened in our country. I'm so, so proud. You ought to be so, so proud of everybody here. We're so thankful. It's been brilliant. Everyone seems to have pulled together, you know. Uh, it's amazing where all the, the, the stuff has come from uh, because it doesn't seem really a large town, but everybody, I mean, everybody in the whole town has pulled together and in, we're chuffed to bits, we really are proud. We will always have a gander in our hearts anyway. I have to say a great, great thank you to everybody in uh, this village, to the staff, to the teachers, to the youth, to the families, and uh, they are so helpful. They are full of friendship to us, and they support us, and they smile, and uh, they cook by themselves, and it's, it's great. And uh, that's more than any master plan can um, um, yeah, could have developed. It's just from man to man, and this is great. And thank you to everybody. Every single person you see has tears in their eyes. This is going to be a hard one to get through. Not hard as in a sad thing, but hard as in just 
It's a beautiful. I would like to know how many people went back to Gander. If anybody went back afterwards, person just actually went home and replanned a trip to go back. It's just, there's so many questions in my mind for the people that were there. Like Central Newfoundlanders invited the plain people into their homes to make phone calls or to take showers and to stay for dinner. Rock solid friendships were soon. Yeah, formed. you would make forever friendships. Miles away from home. We should be plumb insane, but our plates are never empty. Lord, they're feeding us again. <laughs> A thousand miles away from home, we're waiting for a plane. I'm sure I can say this for everybody. I, you know, with something that the stuff that's on television there. Uh, being the worst of what we're capable of, and then coming here and seeing the best of what we're capable of in this place is just so Complete amazing. polar opposites. After a week, with a hurricane headed for the island, and a concern that some of the jumbo jets were sinking into the tarmac, airlines were finally given clearance to fly. It's been quite an adventure. I have never, ever met anybody as nice as the people in Gander. It is unbelievable. I'm serious, never have I met people as wonderful, as helpful. There's not one person that we have come across who hasn't offered to help us in some way. It's overwhelming. We've had very, very good people taking care of us. They've been wonderful. They treated us just like we were home. It's been wonderful. It's, it's been wonderful. It brought tears to our eyes to leave. Um, but they've been great. They've been really great to us. And this is something that you will never forget. You always remember, you know, the people here. Uh, they were wonderful, just wonderful, outstanding. 7,000 plain people, now considered friends, went home and the Central Newfoundlanders got some rest. The ripple effect was just getting started. Towns and cities in Canada were recognized for their hospitality during the dark days of 9-11, but only Gander and Appleton were given steel from the World Trade Center site. Over the years, the friendships formed in central Newfoundland have strengthened, and by the 10th anniversary, the realization had taken hold that what happened here was truly remarkable. The Newfoundland hosts wouldn't accept money for their hospitality back in 2001, but grateful passengers mailed gifts and donations. New computer labs were funded in schools. And in Lewisport, students are still receiving scholarships from a hat passed on Delta Flight 15 when passengers were on their way home. Behind the scenes at the 10th anniversary, two writers were taking notes. Michael Rubinoff of Toronto's Sheridan College sent Irene Sankoff and David Hine to Gander, hoping they'd experience the hospitality firsthand and want to write a musical. Not many people shared that vision to turn this into a musical. Uh, they didn't think this could possibly work. After a three hour dinner, that's where I said to them at the end, I said, you know, try to find people to do a musical about the events in Gander, Newfoundland, the surrounding towns on 9-11. And that's where it happened. No one would have guessed how far that 10th anniversary trip would take writers Irene Sankoff and David Hine. When we first came here, the, the town was filled with press and they were all looking for sort of a five second sound bite. And what we were looking for, well, we didn't know what we were looking no, for, so but we, just so talked. we ended just up talked, talking to people yeah. for three or four hours. And it was those conversations that uh, inspired us. And every, you know, every minute of those conversations was a new story that we wanted to tell, and that we wanted to share, that made us laugh, that made us cry, that inspired us to be better people. And we just couldn't wait to get back home. When other people saw a 9-11 musical, love, love that they we did saw it. a story about community, and we saw a, a 9-12 story about the way this, you know, a smaller community responded to a larger event. And coming out here has just, you know, it's changed our lives, but it inspired us. That's why that's why, we, uh, that's why we made this. Their biggest challenge was convincing the Newfoundlanders 
that they did something worth writing about. I don't know if they thought we were slightly touched and were just being <laughs> nice to us or what, but you know, they just very nicely were like, all right, what else do you want to know? You want another cup of tea? Okay. Oh, and then there's this one guy. And, and we just were like, that's great. More tea, more stories. David and Irene turned those stories into a script and the musical Come From Away was first performed by Sheridan College students. The Canadian Music Theatre Project was created and I'm so proud that our students first gave life to these characters and uh, from that, we're now going to Broadway. But before Broadway, the producers brought the entire cast and crew to meet the real wow. people they're playing on stage. That's freaking awesome. Oh, there's already a cat. <laughs> oh my God, how are you? How are you? How exciting is this? <laughs> I hope I don't embarrass you tomorrow. That's all I hope. <laughs> right? You can tell me afterwards if, I, if you're not happy about it. In Come From Away, Newfoundlander Petrina Bromley plays SPCA manager Bonnie Harris. She crawled over luggage into the holds of jumbo jets to look for and care for dogs, cats, and a pair of rare chimpanzees. We always take dramatic really? liberty, right? Like. I've done shows before, Oil and Water, obviously, Violet Pike was a real person. She's passed away, so I didn't get to meet her, but her family came to see it. And I've played Joan Morrissey, and Joan's family came to see it. And so you hope that you get that at least stamp of approval, but to have the actual person there is gonna be a bit different. Nobody's sleeping, it's like Christmas. <laughs> for two days now, everybody's yeah. like, did anybody sleep? Did anybody sleep? Because yeah. coming here is so exciting yeah. for everybody. Yeah. And then meeting the people that they're actually portraying. It's Bringing Come From Away to Gander was more than a smart PR move. It was an emotional boost for the actors and perhaps a tonic for their pre-New York nerves. To bring it here, to show it to the hometown crowd, is uh, there really aren't words invented yet. Oh, it would be unnerving and, too. And, uh, kind of just joy that I'm feeling getting this opportunity. Um, and it's just such a generous thing for the producers to do. It does, that never happens with a Broadway show. They didn't go back to Oklahoma when they made Oklahoma and say, here you are, here's a story about you. We have one final present we'd like to give the mayor because we want to make sure there's a little piece that comes away in his office. On behalf of all of us here, Mayor Elliot, there's a photo of the company that we'd love for you to hang in your office and uh, remember us always like you could forget. No. <laughs> I know that was a proud mayor. Well, thank you. Woo! Our people didn't know what to expect at first. We don't every day, not too often that a musical play comes to Gander. On behalf of all the citizens of Gander, I want to say thank you to the production, the cast, for bringing this to Gander. There's only a two-man police force. Right. I was standing up by the fence and I looked towards the town. And it was like a sense of calm that came over me because I knew that the people of Gander, the people of this area, the yeah. people of Newfoundland and Labrador would take care of them. We wow. would not have a problem. Wow, it's so interesting to hear you say all those, I mean, li literally things I say in the show. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, so much of the show is taken yes. directly from yes. your words, the words of the people here. Oh. How is that to hear oh, your words coming out of my face? <laughs> <laughs> Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, there's a lot of people try to copy us in our language, in our style. Yeah. And sometimes it's not done very well. And we consider it insulting, but we don't say none, we just make fun at it. <laughs> that's that's yeah. us. Uh, but what you guys did was absolutely amazing. We take it so seriously, the responsibility to tell this story yes. the right way. Yes. We were kind of afraid, you know. <laughs> we were too. <laughs> yeah. Cast members also got tours of the schools and service clubs that housed the plain people. Diane Davis welcomed the Come From Away gang to Gander Academy. And this was the gymnasium. Baby, you come here. Let me take care of you. This one got me a wreck. <laughs> and that's sad. It's just—it's emotional. It was so important to have a part of this, to be able to help these people. 
and that you guys are able to tell this story and that everybody's come together in the way to do it. Yeah, and I'm so glad that you know that it's you and Davis. That you're at least I had no idea. I, I had no idea. Uh, like, there's so much of you in this. It's kind of hard to find words to describe meeting somebody that you're playing and then immediately feeling like you know them and immediately feeling like you love them. Because she said right away, I don't do handshakes, I do I, hugs. I only do hugs. I, I can't describe it. I just can't. And I'm starting to tear up. And I don't like <laughs> That's all right. I got you. It, uh, it's so overwhelming and I'm so humbled by everything. I never thought a tray of sandwiches would bring me here today. <laughs> it's something I do all the time. That was one of the most emotional experiences that I think I've had since I've been here in Canada. To sit and watch, you know, I'm getting emotional just talking about it. To watch Beulah tear up as the two, as she met the character who's going to play her tonight. Uh, or tomorrow here in in the play, which is just fantastic. Um, I, I think the story in and of itself is so heartwarming, but to watch the people interaction here in Gander at the airport, it's uh, something incredibly special. I'll never forget tonight. How are you? I'm very well. How are you today? Good. The first time we saw each other, we were like, oh my gosh. It's yeah. true. I, she hadn't even seen yeah. the show yet. It was in yeah. La Jolla. Um, and she and Tom had flown in after the show had come down. And so we, there's a, a restaurant right across the street. And I walked in and we kind of locked eyes. And she crossed the room and came over to me and said, I think you're playing me. And I said, <laughs> I think you're right. American Airlines had the prettiest place. So I applied as a flight engineer But the World War II pilots, they all complained They said girls shouldn't be in the cockpit Jen Colella never fails to get a wild applause for her song about Captain Beverly Bass. As American Airlines' first female captain, Bev landed a packed jumbo jet in Gander on 9-11. You're getting a point of view from someone who was a, in a leadership position and taking care of a lot of folks and having to hold it together in a time that was so uncertain. I want so many people to see this um, now that we have the energy and the power and the blessing. And all the things that were uncertain, the one thing that is certain is that people, it goes to show you that people are inherently beautiful. People are inherently kind. People are inherently caring. That's not saying everybody out there is. But I would say on the whole, everywhere that I've been to in my life, I've met friends, long lasting friends. Everywhere that I've been to, I've met beautiful people that wanted to, that would give you the shirt off their back. This just goes to further my point that all people out there are caring. Go get around, go look at it, go travel to places you never would have traveled to before. See it for yourself. In times of struggle, especially, people are going to come together to support other people. This is absolutely moving. You're in the center row on the floor. We see this as our opening night. Broadway, that'll take care of itself. This is the important performance that we're going to give. We were here when all this happened, and we all had parking to it. So it's just to see, see if they're doing it right. <laughs> Five years ago, uh, we were touring the airport, and uh, Reg Wright uh, gave us this amazing tour, uh, three or four hours, and at the end of it, he said, now, what are you writing? What are you doing? Uh, a story about people making sandwiches? <laughs> and we said, yeah. A little bit deeper than and that. And he said, well, good luck with that. <laughs> people keep uh, saying, is this a dream come true for you? And this is beyond our wildest dreams. It's, uh, it's impossible to say how much this means to us. There are so many people who made this possible. I, I just want to thank uh, Junkyard Dog Productions. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, everyone here in uh, Gander and the surrounding areas, everyone at Town Hall, Mayor Elliott, Kelly Sevier, uh, and everyone who uh, brought a Broadway musical uh, to the hockey arena here. It's, <laughs> it's amazing.
what we hope is that uh, you and your loved ones uh, will recognize yourselves on stage. We tried to always remain true to the truth of the interviews that you gave us, and that's why we're here today. The cast of Come From Away. This is going to be absolutely epic. We're going to pause today's episode there, and we will jump back into it tomorrow. Never a more moving story. I don't know. It's about a lot more than just people making sandwiches. It's, it's everything. I don't know. It's just something you didn't think about. It's something that is absolutely amazing to see. I'm glad that they decided to turn it into some sort of thing that it can be remembered by. If it's a musical, so be it. I happen to love musicals. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's part. I didn't want to stop there, but we definitely have other reactions today. Chris, I appreciate you introducing us to this whole story. I knew nothing about this before now. Before we started doing reactions, before I had this channel, before Chris came along. So I definitely appreciate it. Smash the like button if you liked it, the dislike button, but I won't believe you. Get over and show CBC, NL, Newfoundland, and Labrador some love. We already subbed up. We already smashed the like button. Their link is right there in the description. Until tomorrow, I'm highly combustible. You guys be happy, healthy, safe. I love you to the moon and back. Peace.